This is the control mechanism for the moving axis aircraft simulator. This is from a uh, CH joystick, which has been connected to a half inch metal rod. So here's our roll movement and our pitch movement forward and back. Same counterweights. Same uh, PVC pipes, pitch, roll. For the uh, roll movement, there's a one inch PVC pipe down the middle of this outer pipe. The roll potentiometer is back here. The pitch potentiometer is right here on top connected to this brass rod and these are rubber bands the rubber bands extend all the way to the ends of the box although they really don't have to now that I think about it As the control arm moves forward, see how the potentiometer rotates. The rest of the circuitry here, these are just pieces from inside the joystick. This is a housing that uh, was too inconvenient to uh, remove, so we just left it there. And then this is the associated wiring that extends back to the rear potentiometer here for the for uh, roll. <coughs> All the buttons work. Let's give that a try. The computer is going to recognize this as a regular joystick. Okay. The computer has recognized the joystick and all the buttons still work. Let's check that first. The trigger is button one. And that's two, three, four, I think is down here. Five, six, seven, eight. This is the hat switch. This is uh, button number 10. As we check it on the computer, we got one, two, I think that's three. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We don't know what nine. Oh, there's nine. Nine. And then ten. Now, this is where we show that our potentiometers work. Let's take a look at the roll. Can roll right, roll left. Roll right, roll left. Roll right, roll left. Right, left. And that's the joystick all the way back and all the way forward. All the way back and all the way forward. All the way back and all the way forward. This works so far, but the disadvantage with the box is that it's too heavy. It weighs about 20 pounds. The control arm itself, with the counterweights, weighs 30 pounds, so this whole thing is just a little too heavy. The box doesn't really serve any purpose except it's a place for the bungee cords to mount and also for the, uh, the rubber band for this potentiometer but we can change things around to where we don't need an entire box to do all this. It's a little too heavy for, for what it uh, accomplishes.
Now, in the simulator itself, the control arm works much as it did before, except that the secret inner workings is now hidden from view because of the box. That's really the, old, the only purpose for the box. And a good reason to make it lighter. I don't need 20 pounds just to uh, keep the circuitry and the, uh, and the potentiometers hidden and the weights. Still works just as well though. I think I still have as much nose up and nose down movement as I did before. Maybe a little less because it's now heavier. I think the heavier the simulator gets, the less up and down movement we have. Maybe. If that happens, then we might just have to raise the platform a little bit to make the pivot point uh, closer. Alright, so the next step, we're going to make this structure lighter. These are too tall. We're going to cut these down to here, move the support down. Since the simulator is going to be heavier now, I'm going to uh, strengthen all the entire frame. Uh, the seat, I actually had to move the seat over. This is no longer centered because I had to have enough room for the side stick. Since it's moving back and forth, I need to have clearance from both my leg and the outer wall of the simulator. So the simulator is going to be a little bit wider than we thought it was going to be. But that's okay. Hehehehe <laughs>